Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Seiner. Today, Bob will discuss glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs result in data governance, sponsored today by Alation. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, Zoom defaults the chat to send to just the panelists we may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. And for questions, we'll be collecting them by the Q&A section, or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights of questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG. And to find the chat and the Q&A panels, you may click those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me turn it over to Jim for a brief word from our sponsor relation. Jim, hello and welcome. Oh, it looks like you're muted. There we go. Perfect. Okay, sorry about that. Hi, my name is Jim Barker. I am a director of professional services with Alation. I focus in on data strategy and data governance projects. And they asked me to jump on and do a quick intro into Bob's presentation. So uh, Alation's a data catalog company. You're gonna hear a lot about catalogs in Bob's presentation. And I just have a few slides that I was gonna walk through here pretty quickly. So give me one second. All right. Sorry, a little technical difficulties. All right, so to start out with, when I'm talking about data governance, I always start with a standard definition that we use to align, align our, our sales, our services, product, marketing, et cetera. And it's something that's been built out over time. And uh, it, it really helps us to understand and stay aligned in our data governance activities. So that being that the people process technology that enable delivery of the right data to the right people at the right time to allow data-driven decisions based upon trusted information, bridging the gap between technology and the business, right? Often when I'm talking with the customer, I'll shorten it up a little bit and be mainly around the people process technology and the right, right, right to help drive us forward. But having a standard definition is something that I've seen great value in organizations that we've worked with, right? This is a, this is a pillar diagram that I like to use as part of that conversation. Sort of data governance lives within this, within this building, I guess, I guess you could say, with a really strong focus in on data quality, data security, and data ops with policies and standards and compliance being a core part of that. And that architecture becomes everything to all people, right? So when I think of data architecture, I'm thinking about conical models, data models, ETL tools, BI tools, everything, including knowledge management and catalogs are playing a bigger and bigger role in that each and each and every day, right? It becomes our centralized place where we can hold things. It's our operational system for, for data centered people, right? And these, this concept is one that we use in our service delivery with, with customers and catalogs can really help you drive this thing forward. All right. Okay. So this is what we call our data governance wheel. It's a, it's a, it's a wheel that we talk about with new, with new customers, with prospects. <coughs> and what it really allows us to do is bring to, is really establish an overall strategy of how we're going to execute in the data space, leverage the catalog at the center, inside this framework, have curated assets to give the single version of truth on all the, all the data objects that exist within our, within our environment. So instead of having to have those key people get the same questions over and over again, the catalog will, the catalog will be there at the center. And I think that'll this will dovetail in nicely what Bob's about to talk to you about. It has policies and controls, and we really push the idea of having a data community to drive things, things forward for continuous improvement overall, right? If you're interested more on the wheel, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to share some, share some good information with you, all right? And the last thing I wanted to show here today, I'm gonna to try to keep this brief to get to Bob. We've actually taken Danette's, Danette McGilvery's 10-step process to data quality and retooled it a little bit for shops that are using catalogs. So what this, what this flow really gives us is a way to go in and think about the catalog help to identify what data fields we need to have governed, assess you know, what those business rules are, and then go back in and of those fields that are governed, identify which ones really need to have a data quality focus. 
And those that need to have a data quality focus then go in and define those specifics, build those rules, make all that available to us within the catalog in order to be able to develop improvement plans, build out improvements, and then implement that and continue to help to move forward, right? So instead of having to have your fragmentation between your data quality tools, maybe you've got a place where you've got some data dictionary, some other things, bringing all that together in a catalog and making it into an overall process is something we see a lot of value in overall, right? So we would love to talk to you more about, about, about catalogs. If you have things that come out of Bob's session today, please reach out to us. Uh, we believe that catalogs are really important. They're at the center of everything that we do. And, uh, and I think you're gonna get a, a lot out of Bob's session. So I don't wanna delay that any, and I'll pass, that, pass this back. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have any open questions today or, or further down the road. Jim, thank you so much. And thanks to Relation for sponsoring today's webinar and to help make these webinars happen. If you have any questions for Jim or about Relation, feel free to submit them in the Q&A panel as he will likewise be joining us for the Q&A portion of the webinar at the end of Bob's session. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consultant and Educational Services and the publisher of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I'll give the floor to Bob to start his presentation. Hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon, and thank you very much, Jim. Thank you very much, Alation, for sponsoring the webinar. Um, I've had this webinar for this year kind of circled on my calendar because I thought that it was something that was going to be really important. Almost every organization that I'm working with to help them to stand up data governance or to improve on their data governance programs are focusing on glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs. But the wording was also struck me as being kind of strange, but because we're saying that glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs can actually result in data governance. When I've actually seen with a lot of organizations that they need to have data governance first, and the data governance will actually end out resulting in glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs. So I think the question that we're gonna kind of look at is, is do these things really result in governance and what do we really need to do around these tools, around the glossaries, around the dictionaries, around the catalogs that will, um, will translate well to the, the governance of the metadata will translate well to the governance of the data within the organization. Um, before I get started, I'd like to quickly run through a few of the activities that I'm presently involved with. As you know, this webinar series um, takes place every month. And next month, we'll be talking about, on the third Thursday of the month, we'll be talking about the impact of data governance on data literacy. There's a couple upcoming events. I'll be speaking at a DEMA Germany event, um, the Information Governance World event, and hopefully uh, I'll see some of you at the DGIQ East event in San Diego, I'm sorry, in, in Washington, D.C. in December, the, the West version was just in San Diego a couple of weeks ago. I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance. So if you're interested in learning more about non-invasive data governance, there's some information where you can find um, find information about the book. I've, pro I've produced a few um, online learning plans through the, the Data Diversity Training Center, one specifically on non-invasive data governance, one on non-invasive metadata governance. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. And then the most recent one that I've done with Data Diversity focuses on business glossaries, um, data dictionaries, and data catalogs. So I think you'll even see here some of the stuff that I talk about there in this session. But um, looking forward to sharing that with you. I'm also the publisher of an online publication. I have my consulting and my education business, and also in my spare time, as I put it, I also uh, work as a faculty member at Carnegie Mellon University here in Pittsburgh in their chief data officer program, their data-driven leadership, and their master's in information systems management programs. So, um, as you can probably tell, I, I like this subject quite a bit. So again, happy to share information with you today about how glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs result in data governance. So here's some of the things we're gonna talk about today. First, we're gonna talk about how, well, first we need to define what does successful data governance look like within our organization. And then we need to talk a little bit about how data governance itself relies on getting some value from the tools that we're mentioning here, the glossaries, the dictionaries, and the catalogs. We'll talk about what it means to govern 
the, the catalogs, the glossaries, and the dictionaries themselves, why it's important to really govern the metadata within the tools. And there's some things that I say quite often, like the metadata will not govern itself. I say the data will not govern itself, but metadata is going to require governance. It's going to require stewardship. People are going to need to be accountable for your metadata. And you can have the best of the tools on the market. And if the metadata within those tools are not governed, it's not necessarily going to add value to people the way it would as if the, the metadata within the tools was governed. We'll talk about the specific roles that are necessary to govern these tools. And then we'll talk about governance resulting from the data governance basically resulting from the governance of the metadata within the cat, uh, the the the, uh, the glossary, the dictionary, and the catalogs. So let's start with a definition, I, and I like the definition that Jim shared associated with with data governance. Um, I talk a lot about data governance really being the behavioral aspect of data management. So it has a lot to do with the execution and the enforcement of authority, the formalization of accountability for the management of data across the organization. So it's worded a little bit more strongly than you might see at other places, but I think it makes sense to have a strong definition to get people to sit forward in their chair and ask you, what do you mean by executing and enforcing authority? And for example, there's, there's rules, there's business rules, there's enforcement, uh, there's regula regulatory rules that need to be enforced. And it's not a question of if people are going to do it, it's gonna be a question of how. It all really focuses on people's behavior. So I say, and not all my clients love this definition, but I say it's the execution and the enforcement of authority, but we can do it in a non-invasive way where we can formalize accountability for data without making it feel like it's over and above what people are presently doing. Um, I also talk a lot about how the data stewards of the organization are basically people that are held formally accountable for what they do with the data. So if they define data, produce data, use data as part of their job, and they're being held accountable for how they define, produce, and use data, they're a data steward. It's not something that a person can opt into and opt out of. So again, the quick definitions of what data governance is, the execution and enforcement of authority, stewardship is the formalization of the accountability for what people are basically presently doing with data. And I say that everybody in the organization potentially is a steward of the data. The reason why I shared those definitions with you is I wanted to talk about them in terms of metadata governance. So you could use the same definition and say that metadata governance is the execution and enforcement of authority over the metadata, because the truth is the metadata is not going to become really valuable to people in your organization unless it's governed. So I don't know if I would word metadata governance that way, but that's kind of just playing on the definition I use for data governance. But that metadata is more than just data about data. It's data that has to be recorded somewhere, stored in an IT tool that improves both the business and technical value of the data. So that's just kind of a quick definition of what metadata is. And basically what I really told you all those things was to lead you to the definition of a metadata steward. A metadata is a steward is somebody in the organization that's being held formally accountable for their relationship to the metadata. And I'll talk a little bit more about relationships to metadata, defining, producing, and using metadata, because that's going to be very substantial in being able to deliver a successful glossary, dictionary, dictionary or catalog to your organization. And the one thing I say repeatedly, I know I have it in a handful of slides, is the metadata will not govern itself. There is no pixie dust that you can sprinkle over your organization, and all of a sudden your metadata is going to be pulled together in a way that's digestible to people. So you need to govern your metadata in ways very similar to the ways that you govern your data of your organization. So let's go real quickly through definitions of a glossary, a dictionary, and a catalog. And this, de this definition, it's kind of interesting. This one came from Dataversity. And there's a lot of confusion in a lot of organizations about the difference between a business glossary and a data dictionary. And, data, and this definition from Dataversity says that a business glossary, it starts by saying how a glossary is different from a data dictionary in the fact that its focus goes beyond just the, the specific resource that it's talking about, the, the, the data. So a business glossary is a means of sharing internal vocabulary within an organization. 
and basically many organizations start by defining the common terms of the organization the common business language that's what typically fits into a glossary um, oftentimes when you're creating a glossary it may not be initially connected to the data itself or even to the data dictionaries um, it's really just again the terminology in the organization and i'll share with you in a moment a chart that kind of pulls together where the glossary the dictionary and the catalog kind of all fit together so later after we understand our business language we can link it to the data so people can actually work through the data marketplace work through the catalog tool uh, work through the business language to get to the data that they're trying to find but again the fact is that you know, if you're going to create a solid business glossary with solid business definitions it's going to require that somebody does that right and somebody needs to define validate and approve the vocabulary of the business so again those people are stewards they're not only defining what data needs to be included what metadata needs to be included in the business glossary but they're putting definition to that and they're putting definition to the metadata that's going to be collected within that tool so, okay so that's the business glossary it's kind of the high level the semantic level in the organization and then there's the data dictionary and so this is my definition of what a data dictionary is and i basically say that it, a dictionary is a list of data elements that are included within a specific resource. Now, there are some organizations that are creating enterprise data dictionaries, but most often you're gonna find there's a data warehouse or a data lake data dictionary or an application data dictionary. But a data dictionary is basically a list of pieces of data that you need to have information about that are gonna help people in your organization to get best use out of that data. So for each element that you have in your dictionary, you want to include the technical and the business attributes that people in the organization find will add most value to the understanding uh, the use of the data. And like I said, there is, has, I've seen a move towards enterprise data dictionaries. I'm not sure it's going to catch on, but maybe that's where the catalog comes in and you can have all your different data dictionaries incorporated together into your catalog. Presently, organizations have their data dictionaries in documents, spreadsheets. I'm sure that you could add to the list in the chat all the different places that you have data about your data or metadata. Um, and so often, like I say, it's I find that it's a data resource specific. And oftentimes organizations are focusing on critical data elements. What is the data that is most critical to the organization? In fact, I just wrote an article about that in TDAN. If you go and look to see the story of the critical data element, I try to explain what a critical data element is in that, uh, in that article. Um, a data catalog is more of an inventory of the data resources, the people, you know, who's responsible for the data. There's a lot of things that you, it's almost like it's the metadata repository of days gone by. Um, you know, it is the central place to house your information about your data to make your data more useful to, to the organization. So there's a lack of common definition of what a catalog is across vendors. Uh, I don't know if Jim would agree with me on that or not, but the, um, the fact is that there are some catalog tools that are very focused on specific aspects of, of your data environment. Um, and so the, the catalogs focus on inventory of data resources. They've been compared to the metadata repositories of old. So here's the diagram that I wanted to share with you as to how these things fit together. And what I'm finding is there's actually even a fourth level that a lot of organizations are adding to this mix. And that fourth level is the data domains, is the subject areas. Sorry, could you say that? is the subject areas the data topics or the business areas and then there's the glossary which houses the semantic level and the dictionary that houses the the, the metadata specific to the the list of data elements within a specific resource and then there's the catalog which captures a lot of this information so again i, I could probably spend most of the hour just talking to this diagram and the connection between all the different pieces but if you're trying to picture where does the glossary and the dictionary and the catalog fit together this might be something that you want to consider so let's talk about successful governance and how it relies on the value of tools so first thing we should do is probably define what we mean by successful data governance 
And in my mind, from what I've seen, those organizations that are the most successful at data governance, their program is supported by their senior leadership, it's sponsored by their senior leadership, and it's understood by their leadership. And somebody has the responsibility for the program. There's still a lot of organizations that are trying to figure out where data governance is going to reside in the organization. Those organizations that are more successful are ones that have identified the people that are going to have responsibility for the program. Also, successful programs tend to, organizations that are successful tend to not try to implement governance all at once. It's going to be an incremental deployment, and we're going to learn by doing. So the second time, the second set of critical data elements that we focus on, we'll, we'll learn from the first set that we worked with. So you'll get better the second time and the third time, but you're not going to do it all at once. And you're going to want to focus on, again, what is the data that's going to have some return on investment to the organization? So you're going to do this incrementally. So a successful program, may it has to be supported, sponsored, and understood. Somebody needs to run it, and you need to do it incrementally. You need to deploy it incrementally. But there's still some other things about a successful program to talk about. Um, going back to my definition of governance and my definition of stewardship, the authority over the metadata and the authority over the data needs to be executed and enforced. You may not use those words because they're worded very strongly, but at the end of the day, if governance is going to be successful, authority needs to be executed and enforced. Accountability for data, accountability for metadata, it has to be formalized. If you're expecting people to do this on the side as part of their job without any formalization around it, chances are it, there's going to be a, a something that's missed somewhere along the line. So formalizing accountability is a, a trait of a successful governance program. And as I've heard with a lot of organizations, building it into everyday activities, organizations are trying to get to the point where governance just becomes a part of what people do. We don't even think of things in terms of governance being an add-on or something that's additional to the organization. So let's talk about the value that comes from the tools. Well, first of all, the tools need to be acquired and need to be leveraged and need to be developed if you're working on do-it-yourself tools internally. Um, in order to get value from tools, people need to understand and use the tools. They need The tools need to be kind of built into the things that people do. So the use of the tools really needs to become, become kind of commonplace among people's activities. Um, tools that are successful and governance programs that are successful with the metadata, they automate the process of getting metadata into the tools. So it's not a manual effort for in order for somebody to move some metadata into the tool. It might be that way early on, but ultimately you'd like the tool to be uh, change management to kick something off that keeps the tool up to date. And then education and training associated with the tool becomes part of your normal curriculum. If we're expecting people to use the catalog, or if we're expecting people to use the glossary dictionary or the catalog, they need to know it exists. They need to know what information's there. They need to know that they need to trust that it's up to date. They need all of these things. And so now the question really becomes, does data governance rely on the value from the tools or is data governance really enabled by the value from the tools? So I'm, I'm not going to try to answer that question for you, but think about maybe it's both things. So the question is, can you really truly implement an effective data governance program without having information about your data readily available to people? I would say in most situations, at some point, you're going to be managing your metadata. So yeah, I would say that that data governance relies on the value from the tools, but also then data governance becomes enabled for all the reasons that Jim talked about at the beginning of the session. You know, data governance, data governance is going to be enabled by the use of a data catalog. All of those pillars that Jim talked about, they're all going to be supported by a, an effective data governance. And so the question is, can you really articulate the impact that all of these different tools, like the glossary, the dictionary, and the catalog have on data governance. So I'm going to tell you that, that my thought is that not only does data governance rely on the tool, but it's also enabled by having the tool in place for many reasons, because the, the catalog itself becomes a, play, a rallying place for stewards to get together. So I say these tools are the connecting point for data stewards. And the value driven from the tool is basically a rallying point for the data stewards. Um, 
in many, many organizations. Um, the data catalog has become the face of the program. It, be, it, it, the, it really becomes the backbone of having a successful data governance program. So let's look at the purchase tool. So are you gonna go out and buy a, a, a business glossary? Are you going to go out and buy a data dictionary? Chances are you probably have some of these things already being developed within your organization. You may not have developed your own data catalog. So at some point you're going to be thinking about, okay, well, we're going to want to store information that's appropriate for the glossary and the dictionary within our catalog tool. Um, but we, there might be things that we can be doing as organizations to prepare for the acquisition of the tool or to, to prepare the metadata to be ingested into the tool that we have within our organization. So in most organizations, the, the glossary and the dictionary, at least again, from my experience, they become do-it-yourself product projects. Somebody is building a glossary, it's based out of Word or uh, or Excel or SharePoint or something that you have available to you within your organization. Um, ultimately, you should be thinking about the use of those tools and ingesting that information into your catalog. You don't want necessarily to have um, diverse places where people can go to get metadata. So when we talk about the tools that we develop internally, and I talk a lot about a data governance framework, I have a RACI that I use for a governance activity matrix, the common data matrix, all of these tools are probably your least expensive tools because you're going to build them yourselves. But the fact is that it's still going to require somebody's time and effort to make certain that you're collecting the appropriate information within that tool. You know, oftentimes when you create tools like that, this, they're created for a specific function. You know, my suggestion is start to build a toolkit of all these different tools that you're building and then be able to reuse these tools for different functions. Because oftentimes when they're developed, they're developed for a specific function. And uh, develop the, they're oftentimes developed for just-in-time availability. The problem with the build-it-yourself build tools is that scalability can become an issue especially if you're building it in a spreadsheet or access database or something similar to that, there might be lack of interoperability. But the good thing about developing tools yourself is that it might be your precursor to acquiring tools. If you can demonstrate value from tools that you're developing internally yourself, there may it may be the added boost that you need to convince people that a, a data catalog, a formal data catalog from a uh, from a vendor is more appropriate for your organization. So, what does it mean to govern <laughs> govern your data catalog, your business glossary, and your data dictionary? And so, for some of you, you might recognize the the picture on the far right of the slide, and I'll get to why I have a picture of Arlo Guthrie's Alice's Restaurant album in in a second. But um, what it means to to govern your catalog, your glossary, and your dictionary somebody needs to have responsibility for these tools so not only is the authority for the tool or for the metadata itself and the stewardship of the metadata that needs to be executed and enforced so your metadata needs to be governed ungoverned data ungoverned just like ungoverned data ungoverned metadata is not going to add the value because you're going to have different definitions different ways uh, it's not going to be stored in a central location um, accountability is formalized you know i always talk about the the data governance bill of rights i say the data governance bill of rights and the word rights is within quotes is that data governance is all about getting the right people to collect the right metadata in the right way during the right process you know all of those things i talk about data governance as being the bill of rights being the right people using the right data in the right way you can apply that to to metadata as well and I was just listening to Arlo Guthrie, Alice's Restaurant, and he talked about, you know, there's a famous line from that song where he talks about becoming injected, inspected, detected, infected, neglected, and selected. He's not talking about metadata. He's talking about what, it, what they did to him before he entered the armed services. But it was very resolute. It was very purposeful. It was a very directed effort. And you know what? The same thing needs to hold true for your metadata. As I said earlier, and I told you I'd say it again, is the metadata is not going to govern itself. Somebody needs to be there to inject it into your 
process to inspect it to make sure that it's validated uh, detect to make sure we're bringing the right metadata in okay you get the analogy but the metadata in your organization needs to be all of these things so that very quickly explained why the picture of Arlo Guthrie and, Al and Alice's restaurant is on the diagram uh, or on the slide. The bottom line is it has to be a purposeful effort to govern and steward metadata. It's not going to happen on its own. And again, the same thing holds true for the tools itself. So when I talk about the governance and the stewardship of the metadata, that was last slide. This slide looks a lot like last slide. We need to execute and enforce authority over the tool itself, including who gets to use it, when they get to use it, who needs to enter information into it, you know, those types of expectations. So the tool itself has to be governed. There needs to be accountability for the metadata within the tool, and that has to be formalized. So the metadata within the tool needs to be stewarded. Again, getting the right people to collect the right metadata in the right way is very important. You know what that is? That's governance. That's metadata governance. That's taking care of your metadata to make certain that the ultimate value that's going to come from the metadata is going to be appropriate for your organization. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to be held formally accountable for something. And we're going to talk about it in terms, and, I, and if you've seen my webinars before, you know that I talk a lot about breaking the actions people can take with data down into three actions. There's, you can define data, you can produce data, you can use data, but pretty much everything falls under one of those. And I've asked people, I've challenged people to add different categories to that, but everything, again, still seems to fall under one of these three categories. But if the metadata itself, if we're gonna hold people formally accountable for the metadata, somebody be, needs to be accountable for defining which metadata is going to be collected and managed by the organization. There's a lot of different types of metadata out there from, you know, it's not just data modelings and glossaries and dictionaries. There's all sorts of reporting tools and analytics tools and quality tools and profiling tools. Every single tool in your environment collects metadata. Somebody in the organization needs to point at all those tools and say, this is the specific metadata that's going to add value to the organization. Or, or they should talk to people about what of the metadata that's available to them would add value, but somebody has to be accountable for defining the metadata that's going to be collected. And then once you've defined that subset of all the metadata you have, somebody needs to put definition to that metadata. Okay, so that's just the definition of the metadata. Now let's talk about producing the metadata. Well, you know, I, I joke a lot about cheeseburger definitions for pieces of data where um, the definition of a student account is an account for a student. The definition of a cheeseburger is a burger with cheese. It's using the same words um, to define what it is we're trying to define. Well, somebody has to be responsible for giving good, valid business definition to data. Somebody has to be responsible for producing the metadata. So we've got somebody responsible for defining what metadata we're going to collect, somebody producing it. Ultimately, we want people to be accountable for using the metadata. If we're going through this effort to make certain it's there and valuable to the organization, we need to, we need to make certain that people are using it too. So here's a little bit, I don't wanna to preach to you in regards to how a tool really results in data governance, but just reading the first line, I say that a tool, a tool, and I could be referring to any of the tools in the top part of the, the second line of the, the heading of the slide, um, any of these tools will add limited value if the tool itself and the metadata within that tool are not governed. It seems to make a lot, make sense that you're gonna get more value from the these tools if the metadata within the tool is being governed. But now you could insert data warehouse, process to deliver. You could say you know, a data warehouse will add limited value if the process to deliver the data warehouse and the data within the data warehouse are ungoverned. You could say that quite a bit. So it certainly makes sense that you're going to want to govern the metadata within the tool. So having the tools in itself, and if you're going to provide good information through the tool, that information is going to need to be governed. You can use some of that piece of governance of the metadata and kind of translate, translate that to how you're governing the data of your organization. So the metadata is an area of data that requires discipline. And then, like I said before, even if you go to the KIK consulting website, it scrolls across the top of the screen that the data will not govern itself. 
and the metadata will not govern itself. Okay, so metadata must be defined. You know, I already talked a little bit about this, where when we when it comes to defining the metadata, somebody has to define which metadata is going to be managed, where the metadata is going to be managed, who's going to produce and who's going to use the metadata, define how the metadata is going to be produced and used. Is it going to be ingested from another tool? So there's a lot to defining the metadata. There's probably more to defining defining the metadata than there is to producing and using the metadata. So once you know what metadata is going to be important value of important value to your organization, you're going to produce that metadata, and then you're going to hopefully share information about that metadata with people in your organization so they will be able to make use of the metadata. So just one more thing to think about. Metadata is data of your organization that need that that will be relied on by people. It's going to be relied on to locate what data in your organization is available. I hear that all the time from organizations. They don't even know what data they have, but if they did know what data they had, they'd have be having a hard time trying to locate that data. Um, it metadata is relied on to protect the data to improve the confidence in the data. The more context and information people have about the data increases their confidence in the data. Improve the quality of the data. Boy, we could, we could talk about that for a whole, uh, another whole webinar. Um, the metadata is relied on to, prove, to improve analytics, to improve, improve reporting, to improve our decision-making process around data. So, um, you know, so like I said, the data is not going to, to govern itself. That's why we need to know who the stewards are. We need to have guidelines. We need to have standards. We need to have senior leadership support, sponsorship, and understanding of what data, data governance is and why it's important. Um, you know, the data is, you need somebody to run the data governance program. Well, you need somebody to run the, the metadata program too. The metadata is not going to govern itself. So you've heard me say this time and time again, and I probably will repeat it again before the end of the webinar, but it's really the one thing to take away from the webinar is that the metadata will not magically govern itself, that it requires a purposeful, I love this, a purposeful, resolute, determined, staunch, unyielding, Okay, I'm not going to read through all of them, but I was looking for, well, what are other words to use other than purposeful and resolute? I just thought I'd share them with you. You know, it's interesting. I had a client not too long ago who was the chief financial officer of, of a large bank in the U.S. who asked me, how many stewards are we going to need and how long are we going to need them for? And I hope some of you are chuckling to yourselves or you might think that that's kind of funny because... You know, I knew the gentleman quite well, and I was able to kind of joke back with him when he asked this question, but I turned it to him and I said, well, I guess that all depends on how long you want to have quality data for. And, or I could have said, oh, I guess that all depends on how long you want to protect sensitive information for. Well, the answer is we always want to have quality data. We always want to protect our sensitive data. Um, it's not a question of how many stewards and how long we need them. It becomes a program. And, and that becomes something that's just ongoing. People need to know the rules associated with defining, producing, and using data in order to improve their definition, production, and usage of the data. We need to get better in how we're defining, producing, and using metadata within the organization. All right, well, we're gonna get ready to wind down here in a couple of minutes, but uh, I wanted to just share with you some of the roles that are necessary to govern these tools. And I have done complete webinars on this operating model and I've dissected it. I really don't have the time to do that today. I did wanna make it larger so that you can see it. There's a lot of different pieces to a successful governance program. From the, on the right-hand side, the top level is the executive level, then strategic, tactical, and operational. And the fact is a lot of these things may already exist within your organization. If the data stewards are everybody, that bottom level exists. The subject matter experts, if those are the people that are your tactical level domain stewards, they may already be there to be leveraged. The council may be new. A steering committee probably already exists. Then the pieces on the left-hand side at least the bottom two pieces probably already exist in your organization. You have IT, you have project management, regulatory, all of those things that are listed. You create working teams to solve problems. The only real difference becomes the administrator. And like I said before, when it comes to metadata management administration, when it comes to metadata catalog administration. Sorry, could you say that again? 
Jeez. Somebody needs to be the person who's managing and administering that program. So when I, I go through the roles, first of all, I just wanted to kind of highlight what typically takes place at organizations with each of these roles. There's oftentimes senior leadership taking the steering committee role. There's a strategic council taking the council level role, the subject matter experts at the tactical, the domain, or should I say the data stewards are again, anybody that defines, produces, and or uses data and that's being held accountable for it potentially as a steward. Then there's the administrator, the partners and the teams. The reason why I highlighted the administrator and the partners is I wanna go through them real quickly. So there needs to be a metadata uh, administrator. As I said earlier in the session, the metadata catalog and the metadata program are not going to govern themselves. Somebody has to have responsibility for it. And typically the metadata administrator is the person or persons that govern tool requirements. They are engaged in selecting the tool. They can, they're engaged in configuring the tool. They're the ones that are providing education, training, and communications associated with the tool. Again, none of these things are going to happen unless somebody has the responsibility for doing these things. So there needs to be a metadata, a metadata administrator. Could it be your data governance administrator? In a lot of organizations, the answer to that question is yes, it could be. But again, that the amount of time becomes more limited if you're also if you're trying to administer a data governance program and a metadata or a data catalog tool at the same time. There's the metadata analysts. Those are people that act in the role as basically the liaison between the metadata team and the business units. So they're people that know the tools, they're people that know the business. Oftentimes these are business and technical analysts within the organization. And they're the ones that are now working at least part-time under, under metadata, you know, helping to make sure that their Sorry, business, that, the, that, that their business unit um, has the understanding that they need in order to use the tool or even works the other direction where that person is getting the information from the business unit as to what metadata is going to be valuable to them. Then there's the metadata stewards. Those are the people that are defining, producing, and using the metadata that I, I talked about before. And potentially it could be anybody in the organization. These are the people that are working with the data. These are the people that are working with the metadata within your organization. Then there's the metadata advocates. The people that know the value of the metadata, people that will talk about the value of the metadata, people that value the metadata for what they do in their job. And these are people in the organization that are willing to use part of their time, their resources to define, produce and use metadata within their, the role that they already play within the organization. Sometimes the metadata advocates become known as metadata stewards. Sometimes they become known as evangelists of the metadata, but somebody needs to be out there um, talking about all the virtues and the value that comes from implementing a data catalog, from impl implementing a data governance tool. And then there's IT. Now, I hope if there's some of you that are in IT that are on this call, I, I apologize for the image. I viewed, I was looking for um, cartoon images for each of the different roles to add. And when I entered in IT cartoon image, it brought me up the IT, the it clown from, uh, from Stephen King's book, It. Information technology really plays a very important role. Information technology, IT, is already governing. They're governing everything that has to do with the information technology within the organization. So there is a partnership relationship between IT and the people that are running the data governance program. Um, we need to know the people. Well, then first of all, there needs to be people when it comes to even these tools or the data catalog tool, there needs to be people to provide the technical architecture solution. Is this going to be cloud-based? Is it going to be on-prem? What are the security requirements of the organization? Who's going to need to have access to the tool? A lot of times the people that are responsible for the data ask the data management or data governance programs don't have the ability to make the determination as to whether it's cloud or on-prem, you know, what the security protocols are, the access protocols. We need to work with IT. We need people in IT to help us to install and maintain the tool to provide updates. And providing updates can be a, a difficult task. Um, you know, ask anybody who's worked with a tool that all of a sudden there's a new version of it. You have to go through a reconfiguration, maybe. Um, but you need people from IT to be there to help you. 
You need people in IT to support the technology, including the backup and the recovery of the metadata. You need people to advocate in IT for the use of the repository tool. It becomes very important. Okay, so the last subject that I have for you today is uh, it should just take a couple minutes and then I'm going to turn it back to Shannon to see if she see if she has questions for Jim and I is um, I just want to talk for a second about what governed metadata looks like. And that's really we're talking about glossaries, dictionaries and catalogs resulting in data governance. It's the metadata itself that needs to be governed and the tool that needs to be governed and the metadata within that tool that needs to be governed. So when we're talking about what is what are good traits of governed metadata? This would be metadata that has now been formally defined. We've selected this metadata for a reason and, and a purpose for collecting this and providing this to people. This metadata, excuse me, is, is formally produced. Somebody has the responsibility for producing the metadata and the metadata is formally used. So we're basically providing the discipline, you know, this discipline of, of how we define, produce, and use metadata translates really well to data governance because people can only define, produce, and use data as well. And we need to know who in the organization defines the data, who's responsible for it, who's the decision maker for it, who's producing the data, who's using the data. So governed metadata is metadata that's formally defined, produced, and used. Now, this shouldn't be a shock to you. Okay, well, first of all here, I said that Glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs result in data governance. Well, if you flip that around, you could say that having data governance could result in your glossary, dictionary, and catalog as well. But there, it shouldn't be a surprise to you that this slide is very similar to this slide. What does a governed data catalog look like? A governed data catalog is one that is formally defined. It even has to how it's being used, formally produced, formally used. A governed business glossary is a glossary that is formally defined. It's not just somebody keeping notes on a, on a napkin somewhere. It's formally defined. It's formally being produced. It's formally being used. What does a governed data dictionary look like? The same thing. What does a governed data catalog look like? The same thing. People need to have responsibility for defining the tool, defining what goes in the tool, producing the tool, getting the tool up and running, producing the metadata that's in the tool, using the tool and using the metadata that's within the tool. Now, like I said, I know I've said this a lot of times during this session that metadata is not gonna govern itself. Sometimes good things are worth repeating. And if there's a, a better way of governing metadata within an organization without having some level of former, formal metadata around it or formal governance around it, then please share it with me. I'm all ears, I'd love to hear that from you. And by the way, I always say that the data will not govern itself either. Um, same thing holds true for our metadata. So in this webinar today, I walked quickly through some definitions of what data, data governance, data stewardship, metadata, metadata governance, metadata stewardship. I even went through quick definitions of what a business glossary, dictionary, and catalog were before I jumped into how successful governance relies on the value of the tool, what it means to govern these tools, why governing the, the, the metadata in these tools is important. We even talked through, about, through quickly some of the roles that are associated with having formal governance around your metadata, and then the, the governance expected from metadata in the catalogs, diction, uh, glossaries, and dictionaries. So dare I ask the question, does a business glossary, a data dictionary, and a data catalog result in data governance, or is it truly the other way around? And with that, I kick it back to you, Shannon, to see if we have any questions. Bob, thank you so much for another great presentation. And if you have any questions for Bob or Jim, feel free to put them in the Q&A section of your screen and just answer the most commonly asked questions. Just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides, the recording, and anything else asked throughout. Now, Jim, this question came in about Alation during your presentation. Uh, does Alation have multilingual support? Yeah, so it's a it's something we've done with customers and a need. It doesn't come up often. And the big area that that comes into play is when we're looking at business descriptions. When you want to go through and be able to have something that can support what we see most often is English and Spanish. To be perfectly honest, so okay, perfect. I love it. Uh, so. 
Diving in here, you know, so for more than 15 years now, I do strongly believe that we need three levels of responsibility, owner, steward, and custodian. Owner is well known, steward must laser focus on a single data point at a time. Custodian needs to express a data concern in the broader context of a single business, being the voice of data governance management in the context of single, um, uh, uh, one single business capability. It just, it's more of a comment, but Bob, do you need anything to add to that? Um, I, every organization calls these roles by different names. Um, I know that I've made it clear in a lot of the sessions that I give that, that I don't like the term owner because owner implies that it's theirs when the data itself is owned by the organization. Um, steward, I get. Custodian, that's used in some organizations. I know in a lot of organizations, the term custodian has to do with more of a technical role associated with the data. But I really think that the owner, the steward, and the custodian, those three levels that were just mentioned, they really align very well with the strategic, the operate, the strategic, the tactical, and the operational levels that I just talked about. So again, there's not one way to boil the ocean. <laughs> That's not the right. I mixed two analogies. Um, there's not one way to do this. And you can call them by different names, but each of those different levels that you've mentioned here and the ones that I shared. I think that they need to be covered. And so whether you call them owners, stewards, and custodians, or you call them your council members, your domain stewards, and your operational data stewards, I don't think it matters that much. I don't know, Jim, any any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, my thing is I think three levels is, is probably right. I often think yeah. of things from a business data steward level, and I look at a basically a tactical or technical data steward, although they never want to be called stewards. They always want to be called data and, you know, data architects or data engineers. And then I see a role for an enterprise data steward where you've got one across the organization. And I'd probably recommend Plotkin's book on data stewardship might be a good place to get some other ideas as well. Mm -hmm. so. that, that tactical level, that looking across the organization is vital to any data governance program success because they all say we've got siloed data. Well, the reason that we have siloed data is that there is nobody in that role that is looking at data as a valued asset across the organization rather than specifically within certain business areas. So in CRM, normally same field or table is used to represent different concepts, customer, employee, organization, customer name, employee name. In this case, how can we define and link business terms with data dictionary and how can we and how can we define ownership? <laughs> um, well, first of all, I'm surprised to hear that there's tables within your CRM system that define data multiple different ways. And it, unless there are certain things within the attributes of that table that are telling you specifically what that table is, what that entry in that table was for. So, um, <laughs> You know, it, it's going to be it, it, the, the scenario that you just presented is very difficult because, like you said, you can't just take this list of data elements within a specific system. They now all have multiple meanings. When does when, when does which meaning apply? So to me, I think that would be kind of confusing. I don't know, Jim, any any thoughts on that? I mean, I, I think what you're trying to do is is. And I think that's why where a catalog comes into play is bringing those definitions together, maybe in a glossary, and then linking the different data objects back to the right glossary item is something that I've seen done before. But I probably need a little more detail on what you're trying to drive towards. And see if they uh, add any additional information there. Um, in the meantime, you know, uh, asking the uh, how have you been able to get alignment and sponsorship from senior leaders that either don't understand the value or are not bought into it. Well, that's a, wasn't there a TV show, like the $10 million question? I think that is the, <laughs> that is the $10 million question. That is the, I, I will tell you that hundred percent of my clients use senior leadership, supporting sponsoring and understanding data governance as their number one best practice. If they don't achieve that, they're gonna fail. So it's very important that you get them to support sponsor. Now the question is, the question was, how do we get them to do that? Um, you know what, it's it's oftentimes not gonna come from us, from us, from us being the data practitioners. 
telling people how better data is going to be better than sliced bread in the organization. It's going to be business people in the organization articulating what they can and can't do with the data the way that it is right now and how that translates to business value for the organization. So it is very possible to get your senior leadership on board. Um, us as the, uh, us, I say the data community, the data diversity community, you know, with our organizations, they've heard us say it before. We need the business to tell the people why the data is, it, why things are slow, where there's limited value, where value can improve. I always suggest that I know I've done this in a recent webinar. There's questions that we ask. The first question is, what can't you do? And this is questions that we ask business people. What can't you do because you don't have the data or you don't have the confidence in the data to be able to do it? Or maybe should I restate that? What can't you do that you really need to do because you don't have the data or the confidence in the data to be able to do that. And then there's the flip side to that question, which is, what would you do? Let's think outside the box. Let's be innovative. What things would we do if we had all the data that we needed and we fully had confidence in that data? And then there's a third question that goes with those first two. And that is, what the heck does data governance have to do with that? Have to do with either of the answers to the first two questions. And if you can take that information from your business people, and I know I'm rambling on here a little bit, but if you can take that information to your senior leadership, it's no longer you telling senior leadership why it's important. It's your business people telling them. I don't know, Jim, that was a long answer, I know, to a short question, but do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, what I typically recommend customers to do when we're getting going with them on data governance is build out a three to five slide deck that talks about what their vision and mission looks like and has some narratives around basically data stories around, look, the, this is the situation we're at. If we do this, this is how we can make, make it help. So by painting that picture, I think you can get a lot more buy-in from senior leadership than just saying, look, we need X amount of money and X, amount of X number of people in my view. Yeah, telling stories is really important, making it real for them. So it's not all hypothetical stuff is really important. And so kind of along those same lines, we got just three minutes left. Um, how can we encourage use of the metadata and catalog? We have gone through all the work of formal governance steps. It's been an amazing improvement, but still not seeing much usage around all the information that has been gathered. Can I pick that one up? Yeah, please do. So to me, when you're rolling out, when you're rolling a catalog and getting data governance moving forward, you want to do a couple of things. One of the things you want to do is you want to focus in on adoption, be reporting off of how many people are accessing that and do a promotion campaign to really make sure people are doing that. Some of that might be, you know, basically doing a docu-jam to get more of the catalog populated and then promoting that activity and what information's there. Okay. Another thing would be to go and, and, and promote the people that are using it, using it heavily and have them tell the stories around, look, these are the benefits that we're seeing with it. So it's, it's just like data warehousing in the early days, right? You couldn't just go through and stand something up. You needed to continue to, to beat the drum, move things forward. And that's how you had the, mo the, had the most success. Um, the other thing is like within, within Alation, we've got a homepage. We try to drive traffic to the homepage to share information, to get people one step closer to taking advantage of the, the, <coughs> the materials that are there and really use it to embrace self-service as people are building out new analytical um, capabilities, data products, et cetera. Hopefully that helps. I really like your answer. I mean, promotion is big. I mean, people need to know that the tool exists. They need to know what's there. They need to know if what's there is not, gonna, is not helpful to them that there's somebody there to listen to them and ask the questions as to what information will be uh, will be important to you. So really ask people what they need. And if they can articulate back to you what they need and you can focus on delivering that information. Like I said, there are so many different types of metadata that are available to your organization. Focus on the metadata that the business community tells you that they need. And if you can promote it, and I love the idea, again, that, like Jim said, and about the use cases and, you know, have somebody who's getting value from the tool, talking about the value that they get from the tool, talking about what it takes to get the metadata into the tool 
um, so people can see that it's not something that's going to interrupt what they do. We can be non-invasive about that. But I, I think that that the promotion is, you know, a very key way to be able to get people to use the tool. Well, thank you both so much for this great presentation and webinar. And thanks to Alation for sponsoring today's webinar to help make these webinars happen. But I'm afraid that is all the time we have slated for this uh, event. Uh, thanks to all of our attendees who have been so engaged in everything we do. Just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides, links to the recording. Hope you all have a great day. Jim, so great to have you with us. And Bob, thank you as always. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jim, and thanks, Alation. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, Shannon, and Day Diversity.